In calculus, we are often concerned with the idea of change, the rate of change. And uh, it's not really a new idea to us, it's just that we're concentrating so much on it here in calculus. Back when we were talking about algebra and we had linear equations, we can think of uh, the slope corresponding with a rate of change. For example, if we're talking about uh, this graph, this is the graph of a linear equation, we can think of the, the, the change involved or described by this graph as rise over run. Rise one while we run two. So in this little graph we have a slope of one half. And we can think of it in terms of change if we have an example like, oh, maybe this is the graph of some population change in a very small, obscure herd of elephants, let's say. And uh, we have a, uh, the number of elephants all along this axis and a time along this axis. So we might have a, uh, an increase of one elephant for two years. So the rate of change in population is one elephant per two years or one uh, half of an elephant a year, you know, something kind of like that. Well, when it comes, though, to curved graphs, the rate of change idea changes a little bit. And in fact, it changes from one part of the graph to another. For example, if we're thinking about the rate of change along this curve, then just think in terms of intervals for a moment. If we're thinking of an interval of one unit, then from, from this point to that point, just this horizontal in interval, this run you see of one, what's the rise associated with this? Well, actually it's a drop, but it's a drop of one, two, three, four, five units. So we're dropping five units while we run one. That sort of is an idea of a negative five slope, isn't it? But, so you see we have a rate of change as a drop of five for one uh, unit. And what about the next one unit? Well, now we're dropping one, two, three. So uh, we're changing at a different rate over this interval, and then for this interval it's only one. Well, the, the notion is that on a curved graph, the rate of change changes. Not only does it change from interval to interval, but it changes from point to point. And that's what we're concerned with here. We're concerned about the idea of identifying the rate of change at a particular point on the graph. Now consider a point like this point, and this is the point one, two, three, four, three. So here's the point four, three. We'd like to know something then maybe about the rate of change at that point. The rate of change at that point corresponds to the slope of a line which is tangent to this graph at that point. Now, tangent to the graph at the point means that the line kind of looks like this. You see it just barely touches at that point. That's the notion of a tangent line at a point. Now we would like the slope of the tangent line at that point because it describes the rate of change at that position. Now to make that calculation, we think about this as, as maybe as an approximation. We can think of the idea that, well, let's just pick another point in the graph. And uh, this is the point five, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the point five, six. And we could think about the segment connecting those two and the line containing that segment. You see now, the segment is called a secant, and the line then would be a secant line. The word secant goes back to the days of geometry. When you talked about geometry and you have a circle uh, on the circle, if you uh, connect a couple of points on the circle, then that's a secant, and the line containing that secant is also a secant line. Anyway, the notion of secant. So. Let's calculate the, uh, the slope here involved with this secant line. And remember that we calculate slope using the slope formula. Slope is difference in y values over difference in x values. Though difference in y values is the rise idea and the difference in x components is the run idea. Rise over run, remember, is the loose definition of slope. So anyway, we have for our slope idea, difference in y components would be, let's see, 6 minus 3 and then difference in x components would be 5 minus 4. And uh, in the numerator, 6 minus 3 is 3, 5 minus 4, 1, so the slope then is 3. So a slope of 3 then is an approximation for the slope of the tangent line at that point. Now, <clears throat> but we realize that if we had chosen this point to be a little bit closer to the point 4, 3, 
then this secant line would shift over just a little bit and be a better approximation. And the closer we get to the 0.43, the better the approximation. All right, our discussion here is to develop a way to sort of generally generate slopes of tangent lines at particular points. So let's generalize our thoughts here. Let's generalize the situation. Let's think that, uh, let me take out this secant line, and we're going to just pick a general point x, y, and, and talk about how we can approach that point x, y, like, like this. Right, here's the graph, and let's just call this any old point x, y. I'm using this as a point, but remember this could be any point on the graph if I'm calling it x, y. All right, instead of now x, y, instead of using y, I'd like to use f of x. f of x is y. So I'll call this the point x, f of x. And I'll pick another point, and uh, this other point I'm going to choose. I, I want it to be very close here, but just for, to, to, uh, for notation purposes, I'll make it up here. But it's arbitrarily close. I'm going to make it arbitrarily close to x by using this. I'm going to say this other point might be anywhere along the graph, but I'm just going to call it x plus delta x. Delta x meaning just a little bitty distance. You see, difference in x value or, or distance from x, I might say. x plus delta x. Now, if that's the first component, if that's the first coordinate of, of that point, then f of that value, that is f of x plus delta x, would be the second component or the second coordinate. So we have the coordinates of a couple of points. And now let's put this into the idea of slope. So the slope then would be, let's see, difference in y components, remember from up here, difference in y components would be f of x plus delta x minus the other y component is f of x. And all of this is over, let's see, the first x value was x plus delta x. And this is minus the other x component, or first component, is x. Now, in the denominator, x minus x go out, and we have simply delta x. Well, this, uh, this kind of gives us an idea, generally, of what we want to do, but you know, as delta x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, see we're talking about making it littler and littler and littler, make that distance from x very, very tiny, then as we, up, the closer we get to x, the better the approximation of the slope of the tangent line. So we want the limit as, in this situation, as delta x approaches zero. That's really what we're after to get that's the slope of the tangent line to be exactly the amount that we want it to be. So, let's go over here and talk about it in terms of limit. The slope then is, the slope of that tangent line, is the limit as delta x approaches zero of this fraction. It's the same fraction we had earlier. And this will give us the slope of the tangent line at a point. Okay, let's find this. Now, with a little manipulation, we can deal with this, but we do, in order to, to uh, fill into this and evaluate it, we do need to know the function. And uh, the function turns out to be, let's see, f of x is, and I have it written down over here, x squared minus 6x plus 11. And let's evaluate this f of x plus delta x minus f of x over the delta x. This incidentally is called a difference quotient. You may have seen a difference quotient before. But let's evaluate it according to this function, f of we're going to be talking about functions and their derivatives for quite a while. And uh, it's useful for us to look at the graphs of functions and the, the graphs of the derivatives. Let's practice that just a little bit. I have f of x is the square root of x squared. 